Hey everyone, today I will show you how to build a networking lab with only a few hundred thousand dollars. We will unbox, test and watch minion tests for at least 10 hours straight. And remember to like and subscribe. Subscribe! In the ever-evolving world of networking, hands-on experience is a key, right? Well, that's where virtual network labs come into play. Proper virtual lab can become a platform for building, configuring and testing networks, all from the comfort of your own computer. No need for physical hardware, messy cables or dedicated lab equipment. We are going entirely virtual. Not only that, you can test how different vendors work together. Cisco, Arista, Juniper and many many more. There are a few virtual network lab solutions available, but for today I would like to focus on the GNS3. Actually, before we begin, we need to talk about how vendors are making their device images available to the public. Most of the time, they kinda don't. Depending on what you want to test, this might be the hardest step. Sometimes you can download appliance image for free. Sometimes you only need to create a free account. Sometimes you need to get a trial license. But most often you need to talk to the sales rep, pay or already be a customer. All in all, it's understandable because in theory you could build an SDN with those VMs in the cloud. Not to mention, there are also multiple variants of virtual solutions from each vendor. For example, I mean, yeah. From my experience, Arista's VEOS is the easiest to grab since they only want you to create a free account. Nokia's SR Linux is totally free, but they are difficult to use outside of container land. Anyway, meanwhile, I think I managed to unpack and connect the switch. Let's see how loud it is. Music to my ears. Sadly, you'll not be hearing that if you start using GNS3. I don't really want to spend a lot of time covering the very basics of the basics, so let me just tell you that you can grab GNS3 from their official website. And you can either use it locally or with GNS3 server, which is also available for free. In my case, I have a bare metal server with Ubuntu and GNS3 server installed on top of it. You might as well install it on Proxmox as a VM, just remember to enable nested virtualization. Did I mention that multiple people can collaborate on projects within GNS? The power to work together is one of the greatest strengths of the GNS. The problem lies in providing the secure access to the lab. GNS servers were never meant to be exposed to the internet, so you should gate off your access with a VPN. For that, I've set up a small WireGuard server, and it works okay. Alright, one important thing on the client-server architecture. Your client and server must match versions. If you have a large team, I suggest you download and share client installers with appropriate versions. For the same reason, upgrading the server midway during the project is not really a good idea. The GNS3 has a web UI, but in my opinion it's not cooked yet. It seems to have most of the important features, but it's clunky, scales some important windows poorly and seems to have issues with connecting to consoles over longer periods of time. 7 out of 10, I'm not using it. The desktop client interface is clear and easily comprehensible. Placing and editing stuff is easy, 
If you want to, you can add RAM, cores or disk space to any device that is placed. When importing devices to your lab, you can create your own versions using existing templates. Most often they differ only on the software inside, their interactions with GNS remain the same. Almost all templates will provide useful info in the Usage tab in the Device Properties. They can provide lots of info on how to log onto the device, and they earn my badass seal of approval! Seriously, when working in a team, this is the most important thing ever. Another cool thing you can do with your GNS installation is switching the default terminal emulator. I don't really like the Solar Putty bundle with the Windows installer, so I switched to Windows Terminal app. It looks much better now. Connecting the devices on the projects is also super easy. Just remember that if you want to add extra interfaces to the place device, you will need to disconnect everything first. So it's better to add more than less in the very beginning. When it comes to useful built-in elements in GNS, I can showcase few of them. The generic switch is a very useful dump switch that easily connects devices together. It can do VLANs, but I've never used that. Debian or Ubuntu VMs are not really built in, but you can grab them with existing templates. They can have graphical user interface or just console access. It's super useful, especially if your device exposes some sort of web UI. Pow PCs are a light container emulating an endnote within a network that can be pinged. It has no SSH server of its own though, and I find fully functional VM of Debian or Ubuntu just better. Cloud object can be used to connect or bridge to physical interface within the server. It's cool, but not as cool as a NAT cloud. The NAT cloud can provide you with built-in DHCP server and internet connectivity. It's a global object, meaning that when it's placed on multiple projects, the devices connected to it can see each other. With a small tweak to server's IP tables, you can make that NAT network accessible via routing from VPN. It really makes SSH access to the lab much easier. That about wraps up the things I find the most useful in GNS3. If you want to see more materials on GNS or anything else in particular, be sure to leave a comment. Now, what can you build with it? How about a lab for the world's fastest temporary network? Cynet is a network that is built and operates only during the supercomputing conference. Many vendors provide Cynet with tens of millions of dollars worth of equipment and solutions that need to be orchestrated into a working network. And for that, Cynet needed a lab. Currently, GNS3 is the glue that binds everything together and makes it possible to test new technologies, protocols and vendor interoperability beforehand. Cynet accepts student volunteers, so if you're interested, go and check it out. As a guy from Poland visiting USA only for this conference, I, I just got, got three, three things, things to, say. to say. God bless our troops, God bless America, and gentlemen, start your...